All right, welcome back. Um, I'm Abby, I'm here with Sid. Um, we're talking about something special right now. So this was actually a launch from this morning's keynote. That's right. Um, so we're talking about multi-account, multi-region data aggregation with AWS Config. Um, so Sid, thank you for joining me. Can you tell me a little bit about what AWS Config is? Yeah, sure. Um, so if I were to summarize AWS Config in two words, um, I would call it a configuration auditor. Because uh, what it really does is it tracks configuration changes to your resources. Uh, so you have a history of all configuration changes that occur to your resources. Uh, and then you could go back in time and view the history or, or the configuration of a particular resource if you like. You can also use the config rules engine which basically allows you to create some rules or policies uh, or best practice checks for that configuration and then config will go ahead and alert you if a particular resource is non-compliant with a particular policy. So that's really what the service does. So I can both create the rules, but I can also audit to make sure that I'm Absolutely. complying with the rules that I write. Absolutely. Um, so can you tell me about what you launched this morning? Yeah, we, were, we launched a very exciting new feature today called multi-account, multi-region data aggregation. Uh, so what this feature basically does is it aggregates your config rule compliance information from multiple accounts and regions into a central account so that you get a unified central console or dashboard where you can see your organization-wide compliance status. Uh, so the reason uh, this feature is exciting is because uh, previously customers, uh, in order to get that unified view, had to go into each region, into each account, and pull that information into a central account. Uh, a lot of those customers used custom scripts or third-party tools to get that, so it was really a painful exercise to do that. So what this feature really does is uh, it makes it really simple to aggregate this information into your central account. Uh, so as a central IT admin, you have an enterprise view of your compliance. And super important again, right, is that I can aggregate this information from multi-accounts and multi-regions without having to write a custom script myself. Absolutely. I don't have to be the one pulling the data in, I can let AWS yep. Config take you care of it. You let us do all the heavy lifting. Yeah, yep. so we actually had someone in, in Twitch that, that teed us into this really nicely saying basically this is, this is important for like anything important, so listen up. Um, so multi-account, multi-region is obviously a really, it's a really big subject, right? Because that's how people do high availability, that's how you do resiliency, that's how you make sure that you're fault tolerant. Um, so being able to kind of aggregate that data in multiple places is great. Um, can you tell us if, for those of us that maybe aren't already using multi-account, multi-region, um, a little bit about how this data aggregation helps customers and what their use cases might be. Absolutely. So the primary use case here is uh, someone for a central IT admin or a security admin, if they want to get this, this, uh, this organization-wide view of compliance, uh, this is how they get that. So basically this allows them to create an aggregator, get all the information in one place, and get, get a central view into, into compliance. Uh, a lot of our customers are managing you know, upwards of hundreds of accounts, uh, and in order to get that information, uh, this feature would be really valuable for them. I think what's important too is that for a lot of people, it wasn't without this, you don't actually get a full picture of what your organization looks like because you're in multiple regions or you had multiple accounts. So yeah. without having something like multi-region, multi-account for this, you never really got the full picture. You only got the, unless you wanted to write something yourself, you had Absolutely. to go kind of hunt around in the different locations to find out what the total picture looked like. Yep. Uh, another exciting part of this feature is that it integrates with AWS organizations. Okay. Uh, so what that does is it really simplifies your setup experience. Uh, so if you want to look at the compliance status across your entire org, uh, you can just use this feature. Uh, and you don't have to worry about accounts joining or leaving your organization because we're already integrated with organizations. So anytime an account joins or leaves your org, uh, our aggregator gets updated automatically. So that's a really cool feature about this. Um, just a side note, uh, Robert Tables from Twitch says, FTA compliance is a great use case for using AWS config if you offer some kind of multi-tenant. So this is a great feature, exclamation mark. So Robert Absolutely. from Twitch is super, is super into multi-account, multi-region. Great. Um, okay, so you mentioned AWS organizations. Do I need to be an organizations user to use this though? Absolutely not. So okay. this feature is available for customers who are not using organizations yet. Although if you use organizations, it really simplifies your setup experience, okay. as well as you don't have to worry about accounts joining or leaving your, your enterprise. So. Good to use, not a need to use. Yep. Yep, yep. awesome. So we're down to my favorite, my favorite question. Um, 
How can I get started using this? So how can I play with it myself? And do you have a demo that Absolutely, I can Absolutely, I do have a demo. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do is, uh, if I can just switch to the demo here. Uh, so the first thing, in order to use this feature, uh, you have to enable config and config rules in your accounts. Um, step so one. Yeah, that's step one. <laughs> you can use CloudFormation stack sets, which is a very nifty feature within CloudFormation, uh, to take a template and roll it out across multiple accounts and regions. So that's, that's step one. Uh, so once you have config set up, um, you can go in here into the config console, uh, go into the aggregators page, uh, where you essentially create uh, an aggregator. Now an aggregator is uh, a new resource type uh, within config. Uh, so you can go ahead and the first thing you do here is you give us permissions, you give AWS config permissions to replicate your data from all of your uh, different accounts in your, in your enterprise into this particular account. Uh, once you do that, you can then go ahead and uh, name it. So I'll call it my aggregator. How many times a day do you have to type aggregator? And do you <laughs> get the right number of Gs? Oh yeah, it's been like more than 20 times, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I I type it wrong all the time and I would have like three Gs or one G or not the right number of Gs. It happens a lot. <laughs> Um, so the next thing is uh, you specify your source accounts. Now your source account uh, are the accounts that contain your config rule compliance information. Uh, so in this case, you could either type in your accounts individually or you could you know, integrate your entire organization with, with this aggregator. So for the sake of this demo, I'll go ahead and um, just add my organization. Um, I need to be the master account owner for the organization in order to do this. Um, and then the other thing is I need to have all features enabled in my organization. Uh, the next part here is uh, I'll choose an IAM role. Um, and this role is needed so that AWS Config can get a list of your accounts from right. your organization. So uh, I've already created a role previously, so let me go ahead and choose that. Okay. Uh, the next part here is uh, I'll select the regions from where I want to aggregate all of the information from. Uh, so and we're going to do all of them. Yeah, we'll just do yeah. all of them. Uh, at launch, we are available in nine regions that are listed here. Um, and, uh, and then I'll also have an option here to include future regions so that you don't have to worry about coming back into the aggregator and adding new regions. Okay, let me go ahead. I have ahead. a clarification question, by the way, from Twitch that says, does an account have to be a person, like an IM role, uh, for you to, to when, you, when you create a new account? Or can it be like a group email account, like uh, so in this case, we're, we're, we're just, join, uh, just creating or adding accounts to the, uh, to the aggregator. We're not creating any accounts. Um, I think clarify, so I think clarifying for you, the, the question, I think you already answered that question, which is you have to be the owner of the, the aggregator account. So for, all the, yeah. for the account that you're pulling the data into, that you're aggregating all that data into, so your destination account that has like the sum of everything, you have to be the owner of that account. You can't be like a secondary IAM user. Yeah, you, you can control your permissions as to who can create an aggregator using IAM permissions. So as long as you have those permissions, you can create an aggregator. I'm pretty yeah. sure that that's what they were trying to ask. So yeah. that's the answer. If you, if that didn't answer the question, um, please clarify, because I'm not sure I understand it if that's not it. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and save this um, aggregator. So my aggregator got created. Uh, now all I need to do is uh, look at the dashboard. Uh, it typically takes a few minutes for all the information to flow in. Uh, so I've got a few um, aggregators already created. So let me go back here and select another aggregator to show you the dashboard. Okay. So this is what your aggregated view or, or dashboard would look like. So right at the top, I've got the aggregator that I've created. Uh, I've got all the regions from where I'm going to be pulling data from, uh, and all the accounts that exist within my org. Um, so I can, I can filter it down to just view the compliance for a particular account or a particular region, uh, or I could just go into any of the widgets here. Um, and I could click into here, and I could, I could look at all the results for absolutely. what resources are compliant so or not. So for example, here, if, if you want to look at this particular rule, which says your, that your EBS volumes need to be encrypted. Uh, so we've identified all of the EBS volumes that are not encrypted for this particular account. Uh, so you can see all that information in here. This is a really easy way, guys, by, by the way, to, to kind of save us from ourselves. So things like for, forgetting to encrypt a volume, like you just make yep. a rule for it and then let 
can fig tell you when you've broken the rule. So you don't Absolutely. have to like remember like the whole like the mental checklist every time when you're trying to set something else up, you can just like config and force the rules and it will say, hey, you forgot to encrypt your volumes. Absolutely, and, and today we've got about 45 different rules uh, that config offers out of the box and these are based on best practices you know, that AWS recommends uh, as well as the industry uh, recommends. Uh, so we're, uh, you know, I would really encourage you guys to go ahead and, and subscribe to those rules. I have um, two other questions yep. for you too. Um, so one is the maximum number of accounts for consolidated billing 20 still? Um, no, I think it's much more than that and that's the organization's team uh, would be able to give you a better answer. Uh, so we will look up a final answer on that one, maybe one of yep. our mods can, um, but we believe it is greater than 20 now yep. for consolidated billing. Um, and then the follow-up question is, can you audit users that don't have MFA configured? Um, absolutely. Um, so we yes. we have a rule that that actually checks whether you have MFA enabled or not, and that would help you identify those accounts. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so just real quick on the, on the other widgets, uh, you can identify your top non-compliant rules. You can also identify the top accounts or the bad actors in this case. Uh, you know who have the most number of uh, non-compliant rules. Uh, so I can just go ahead, pick up the phone, and contact that account owner and ask him to fix it. Hey, Abby, so, none of your yeah. volumes are encrypted, and also you don't have MFA, and also look yep. at all this stuff you messed up. That's awesome. You can get a personal call from Absolutely. Sid when you don't <laughs> follow the rules. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. So it's a really a nifty feature which gives you that centralized view uh, as a central admin. Okay, cool. So. Yeah pull in kind of centralized auditing from all the different accounts and regions that belong to my one main account. And then Absolutely. group it all together in one place. I can identify bad actors. I can identify yep. resources that don't fit the rules. Um, yep. So our moderators have been super efficient today. Um, so, <laughs> so they've answered most of the questions in chat. Um, if you have more questions, keep passing them on. Uh, last thing really quick, uh, where, what do you kind of see as being next for AWS Config? Well, we've got a lot of exciting uh, requests from customers you know, to enhance config. Uh, they want us to add support for more and more uh, new regulatory frameworks like PCI, HIPAA. Uh, they also want to have you know, remediation capabilities. Like today, it's purely a reporting mechanism or alerting. Uh, take an action so, when yeah. I violate a So rule. we've got a lot of uh, requests from customers for that. So yeah, we're taking in all requests and consuming it. So thank you for so that. You, you heard him. He said he's taking all requests. So keep <laughs> sending your questions, keep comments, and feature yeah. requests. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, this has been great. Um, if you have more questions in the Twitch chat, just keep sending them along. I think uh, moderators are standing by as the new operators are standing by. Um, I'm probably dating myself with that joke, but um, <laughs> Sid, this has been great. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And great. Twitch, we will be back in just a couple of minutes. Thank you.